Life is made of hundreds of things affecting your life. Big things like family and friends, as well as bits and pieces as going fishing with your family, or just something so funny it makes you laugh out loud. Now imagine a life where every simple thing bothers you and keeps you from being happy. Every little thing. This is called Obsessive Compulsive Disorder, OCD for short. For three years of my life, I suffered from OCD. Whenever I was happy, I was bombarded with the guilty memories and thoughts of the actions I had done that weren't even that bad. I felt as if I was alone in a boat in the middle of the ocean, tired, alone, and scared. My OCD was at its strongest when I was in grade five. In grade five, I was a big kid, and that caused a lot of bullying. My OCD made the words hurt a lot more than they should have. For me, words didn't hurt, they would incapacitate me. Everything I did needed to be perfect. I would lock the door over and over, lights on, lights off. I was awkward and unsocial. I started to see a therapist and learned how to fight the thoughts in my head, and eventually I vanquished the beast at the end of grade 7. The voice in my head finally stopped. I eventually learned I wasn't alone in the fight against OCD. People like Harrison Ford, Will Smith, Leonardo DiCaprio, Justin Timberlake, Daniel Radcliffe, David Beckham, Michael Jackson, Kanye West, Jessica Alba, Megan Fox, Katy Perry, Donald Trump, Albert Einstein, and many, many more had it too. They were all in the same boat as me. Who knew? Last Christmas was the first Christmas in a long time I was actually happy. When I had my OCD, I never told anyone, not even my own brother, Tyler, who I spent my whole life with. I thought people could use against me and I could never trust anyone, not even my best friends from kindergarten. When I graduated from my middle school, I kind of thought of it as graduating from my OCD, leaving it behind, just like I was leaving my old school behind. Two years after beating the disease, I'm still afraid of what people may think of the darkest point in my life. Will they pity me? Empathize with me? Think I'm some sort of freak with a Batman fetish and send me off to Arkham Asylum? I decided to finally expunge my OCD once and for all. I would have to tell those closest to me about my former dark side. I'm not the disturbed, chubby little boy from junior school keeping secrets from his peers and family. I'm the young man ready to face the truth of what he was. And hopefully, my friends and family will be too. So, um, how long have you known me? I've known you since grade five, so four years, I think. My whole life? Grade three, 15 years. 10 years, at least 10 years. Right now, I describe you as uh, funny. A very polite gentleman. Very humorous, creative. You're full of surprises, I guess. I'm caring and very charismatic. How would you describe me uh, five years ago? Five. Funny again, very silly. Chubby. No, no, I feel like you were uh, more secluded. I'm not sure if that's the right word. You weren't as uh, open as you are now. Shy and quiet, not really outgoing at all. When I was in grade five, did you notice anything weird about me? No, not really. <laughs> Chubby. <laughs> you didn't. You didn't go out much. You were a shy little guy. Didn't have too much confidence. You hated sports. You hated hockey. You hated baseball. You never wanted to go anywhere. Do you notice anything different from me now? Like now I think you feel more uh, happy with yourself than you did back in grade 5, if you know what I mean. So making people laugh. You've got more confidence. Kind of sounds like an action hero, you know. <laughs> Ryan Manning. You went out of your own mm -hmm. personal bubble, kind of expanded it. You kind of do things now that I did not see you ever attempting or even thinking about doing five years ago. But like I said, like before you, you kept more to yourself than you do now. Like now you're way more open. Like. You just, you're not afraid to say things to people, you're not afraid to go up to people and talk to them. Yeah. Well, uh, uh, this is hard for me to tell you, but uh, uh, when I was in grade five, I, uh, I battled OCD for a long time. Uh,
Uh, I was diagnosed with the uh, mental disease uh, uh, obsessive compulsive disorder. And I'm not getting that. Yeah. Are I was, you serious? Uh, I was diagnosed with the mental disease OCD. Yeah, I battled it for uh, <clears throat> a long time. I uh, didn't beat it until grade 7. You don't want to do anything. You kind of stay home. You have a small group of friends, but you never went out of it. I think about it more than other people would. Yeah. I don't want to say the word suicide, but I wanted to inflict pain on myself to take the thoughts away from my head and to actually feel something. Actually, I'm dead serious. Yeah. What the hell? Why am I hearing about this now? When I had it, I was too afraid to tell you because I was afraid of what you may think of me if you thought if you'd think I was like some freak or something. It took me two years after being diseased to decide I'm sure people will accept me, so I thought that putting my OCD behind me forever um, would be coming out and telling everybody about it now. But yeah, you're right. It makes sense to just told mom and dad. I wish you told us. I couldn't. Yeah, that makes sense why I didn't tell me. Because mm -hmm. I was an asshole to you when I was younger. I could never have seen you having something like that. I'm still in shock that you actually had it. Yeah. Nobody would have judged you if you told us. It's not like you wanted to have those thoughts in your head. Uh, I don't think of you any differently. You were the person you were then, you are the person you are now. It, it, the fact that you had OCD doesn't change any thoughts that I had about you. Ryan, you're one of my best friends. Like, nothing that you, you, know, you have will change that. Nothing that you've done will change that. Life is made out of hundreds of things affecting your life. Big things and small things. And I've noticed when you don't let those small things bother you and hold you back, you can change your life and do things you never thought you could do with it. You don't have to spend your life alone on a boat in the middle of the ocean. Instead, you can dock that boat on the shore and join the people you love most.